are experiencing a huge increase of visitors to the observatory. It's very typical to have 100 or even 200 people show up on a Tuesday night. When I first started here, uh, there was a smaller staff, and I, I would say that we had occasional very busy nights. If it was a nice clear night, we would get a large crowd, uh, but it's definitely gotten busier in the past few years. It's a time for people to not be busy and to be reminded, I think, when they uh, come to the observatory that um, the universe is huge. It's a place where people can come for free, bring their families, learn something about astronomy and also enjoy the night sky. The night sky is part of everyone's life and so it's the one science I think that is able to touch people quite immediately and readily and uh, just being together on the porch uh, in the night and looking at the sky is uh, a wonderful experience. I think the most incredible part about the lad was being able to like observe like the mechanics um, dating back from like when it was originally built in the late like 19th century, and especially like seeing like the mechanics of like the revolving roof and seeing like the volunteers operate it. I think was really incredible. The entrance is kind of cool, even though it's um, nothing like out of the ordinary, or nothing like humongous, but it kind of took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting that. When you come into this building and you go up the stairway. You almost feel like a sense of stepping back in time to a simpler time before we really understood much about the universe. You're seeing something that people don't normally see now, what life was like in the 1890s. Space science has come a long way and we have computers to do so many things for us now. Um, but it's always incredible to, to see how people solved the same problems that we now solve with just like a motor and a computer, how they solved those when they had nothing like that available to them. The building was uh, built by um, uh, Herbert Warren Ladd, who funded the entire observatory. Ladd Observatory was built starting in the late 1880s and completed it in 1891. It was built with three missions in mind. Uh, one was to provide an opportunity for the public to uh, view the sky and understand more about the universe. Another was to provide a timekeeping service for Providence and the area. And the third mission was uh, to provide astronomers at Brown the opportunity to do research. LAD is a historic observatory. It has beautiful optical quality, so the images are extremely sharp, but it is not a very large telescope, and it's in a relatively dark site, and it's really optimized for human eye observing. The telescope upstairs has a weight-driven drive. Uh, it doesn't have any electric motors. You have to wind it up like a grandfather clock at the beginning of the evening, and a system of weights pulling on cables actually make the gears turn and allow the telescope to track whatever it's pointing to. Lad Observatory is a little bit unique in that most observatories at major universities have um, been upgraded um, over the years and so they would replace the original telescope with something more modern, uh, replace the mechanical clock drive with a motorized clock drive, uh, so it's changed a lot. Uh, this observatory is pretty much a preserved time capsule of you know, the way it looked in the early 1900s, over 100 years ago, um, and everything is pretty much original. So I think the type of building, the type of telescope, and it's specialized in something that I love doing is looking at the moon and the planets. Um, so that's what does it for me. Um, and then to share it with others. I think it's a great resource for the people. It's nice that it's free. Um, I think it's very interesting, obviously. I would like that the layman can come through and uh, maybe learn a little bit. On a, in, a, in a two hour stint, that sort of thing, it's kind of nice. In the group that we get here, you can tell that, you know, the kids are interested, especially once they've gotten to the telescope and seen it. And I've actually had, if the line wasn't too big, I've had some kids with their parents get back in line and come back around again to take another look. Uh, Lad um, has always been here to serve Providence and actually a good portion of Southeast New England. So we provide a, a center for the community. Um, and I think it's one of the uh, 
more visible attractions here at Brown. We try to do a lot of outreach uh, in the physics department. It's very important for us to be trying to connect what it is we're doing here in our basic research, even in our upper level classes, with formative scientists or people who are hobby scientists. Lab uh, plays a central role within the outreach of the physics department. By far the largest component of outreach that we perform is, is centered around LAD. We reach the most people that way. Um, and even things which are not directly related to um, astronomical observing or the uh, telescope at LAD benefits from association with LAD. It's really nice to be in a place where people are so passionate about what they're, they're studying and they want us to learn a lot about it too. So it's really refreshing. The public outreach mission um, as well as um, giving students at Brown an opportunity to um, learn about astronomy and about the night sky and about observatories as they existed in the uh, 19th century. Um, that mission still really exists. The biggest achievement is just preserving the entire building and promoting it to the public and keeping this going. I think uh, things look very, very positive. I would expect over the next several years for us to, to take on some new challenges and uh, actually you know, get some good work done here.